Today is a good day. Like every day. Grumpy Willow with you here. In this video, we have assumed that you already know, or already have the basic knowledge in parametric modeling with a CAD application. If you are just beginning, you can still follow the video with use of the pause, play button, and slow, stop motion features in your player. There is a subtitle below, provided for your reference, and narration by, yours truly. In this way, you may be able to create or make the model featured here, and in our other videos. We hope that you will enjoy watching this video, as much as we did making it. Please don't forget to subscribe, and click on the like button below. Thank you very much. Grumpy Willow and the House Mouse Team. Good day to all my friends, and subscribers. Today, in this video, we will begin by creating a cylinder block for the project simple engine. Select new file, and choose standard IPT, and click the create button. Now we wait for the workspace to load. I am impatient, so we fast forward a little. Good. Start a 2D sketch, by creating a new sketch on the workspace. Select the XY plane to bring us up front. Create a line from the center point, going down. Then, another line from the center, going left. Dimension the line to 50 millimeters. This will be the volume of the cylinder. Our approach is to create a surface a little longer than the actual cylinder. So we can trim and cut anything, or anyone that gets in our way, with this surface. Connect another horizontal line to the other end, and snap it on the opposite end, to form a rectangle. Then pull down this line a little lower. A little more lower. What you see here is half of the cylindrical section to be revolved later. This will be a reasonable length. Dimension this line to about 90 millimeters. This will be the reasonable length to start with. On the same sketch, create little creepy rectangles to form the cooling fins of the cylinder block. Dimension the thickness of the fin to about 4 mm, for a start. Create a column of creepy fin sketches going down. There are two approach to this. First, is this selection intensive, tiring approach. Then the other visual candy approach. After pressing the F7 key to section the surface, create what will be the actual body of the cylinder block. Create a rectangle to form the base of the cylinder block. Connect this line to the center point to form the axis of the cylinder. Adjust by eyeballing what will be the thickness of the cylinder block. Dimension the distance to 50 mm for the piston radius, plus 10 mm for the wall thickness. Now, create the little old creepy cooling fins by the edge of the proposed cylinder wall. Dimension the width of the fin to 30 mm from the edge of the wall sketch. Dimension the distance of the fins from the top of the cylinder lip, to the top of the first fin to 4 mm. Then dimension the thickness of the fin to 3 mm. 
change it later, if it does not look good. Select the rectangular pattern button on the sketch tab ribbon. Select the creepy geometry to pattern. Select the direction of the pattern by choosing a line for the direction. Enter the spacing distance between the geometry. The proper way is to select the dimension of the geometry thickness plus the distance between each geometry. In this way, you only adjust the dimension value of the spacing later. In life. Enter 15 as an initial number of occurrences for the fins to see the outcome of the sketch. Before pressing the OK button, inspect the sketch to see if it looks right. OK, let's go for it, at the moment. Turn off the visibility of the surface to perform a revolve on the sketch. On the 3D model tab, select the revolve button. Select the profile, which is the rectangle. Select this edge for the axis, and now, we have the revolved solid for the engine block. Share the sketch from the browser. Verify if the sketch is shared, and use the same sketch once more, for another solid revolve, on the bloody cooling fins. Select the revolve button on the 3D model tab, select each bloody cooling fin profile one by one on the sketch, until you drop. Now that all profiles are selected, select the line for the axis, and the revolve is executed perfectly. Now that it looks almost like a cylinder block, out of a sand cast, we will check on the cutter to remove the part we don't need. Turn on the visibility of the surface, and inspect, if we can perform the cut on the solid. As we can see, the surface didn't protrude from the bottom. In this case, we will adjust the length of the cylinder block, from the sketch that drives it, to a point where the surface can effectively perform a cut on the solid. We can adjust anything later, when needed, this is the sketch made earlier. Move the line to make it shorter than the surface, and exit the sketch. Turn on the visibility of the solid and verify if the surface below is visible. Now that it is visible, select the split button on the 3D model tab. Select the surface that will cut the solid. Select the trim solid button on the split menu, verify the cut direction in the right position, and correct it from the remove section of the split window, by selecting the opposite direction, then press OK. Turn off the visibility of the surface to see the results of our actions. This is the first method. The cooling fins are created from within the sketch that drives the solid model. Labor intensive, much more if a full round fillet will be implemented on each fin. In this method, only one cooling fin is used for the extrude. First, the cylinder is created with the revolve. Then only one profile from the sketch is used for the revolve solid operation. Select the fillet from the 3D model tab, then select the full round fillet from the fillet command window. Click on the three surfaces of the fin, to complete the fillet. A preview of the fillet will be displayed. Press OK on the fillet command menu. On the pattern section, in the 3D model tab, select the rectangular pattern button, and select the features to be duplicated, including the full round fillet on the browser. Then select the direction 1, on the rectangular pattern window. In this case, you can select a visible sketch for this option. A preview will be shown. For the separation distance, select the distance between the cylinder top surface, 
and the fin top surface made earlier. Plus, I mean, add a plus sign on the entry. Then select the thickness dimension of the cooling fin. A preview of the operation will be shown. Inspect the preview, if this is what you expect it to happen. Next, select the number of cooling fin instances your heart desires. For now, make it 18 instances to follow the sketch made earlier. Press OK, and the end result looks exactly as the first method. In the end, the best method will still be the best method for you. Go to the end of part, or EOP in the browser. Right click on the EOP, and delete all features below EOP. We just deleted the first method. Turn off the visibility of the driving sketch. Turn on the visibility of the surface once more, select the split button on the 3D model tab. Click on the trim solid button. Select the split tool, and subsequently the solid to trim. Verify if the dingling arrow is on the right direction, then press OK. Turn off the visibility of the surface, and check the solid model once more. On this segment, create the pillars that will hold both head and block to the crankshaft. Switch to top view, and make a sketch on the top surface of the cylinder, as shown. Create a square at the center of the sketch. Do not create a center square, only a two-point rectangle. Project the geometry of the outer circle as shown. Then convert the projected circle, to a construction line. Constrain each line of the rectangle to the circle, with a tangent constraint. The rectangle will be a perfect square. Create a diagonal line from each corner, of the square. Select everything, and convert all to construction lines. Create a two-point slot from the ends of the square, collinear to the diagonal lines made earlier. Constrain the outer arc to the square as shown. Since it is a square, the other side of the arc will be tangent with the absence of a constraint. Do not constrain the arc to the other side, you will be searching layers upon layers of errors and warnings for only one legit error. Further adjust the slot so the opposite arc is beyond the edge of the center hole, dimension the radius or the width of the slot to 24 mm, create three more slots identical in procedure as the last. Make all dimensions equal to the first dimension by equation. Always reference the equation dimension to the first dimension. From the sketch tab, shift to the 3D model tab, and click on the extrude button in the ribbon. Extrude all four pillars to the other end of the cylinder. Pull down the dingaling that controls the length of the extrusion near the other end of the cylinder. We will determine the exact length later. Looks interesting. 
the extrusion made was a cut extrusion, but this is not our intention. Double click on the extrusion again, and select the add button, and confirm highlight on the set button. Select the new solid button below, to make the pillar a separate solid to cut later. Now it looks more like it. Confirm two solids in the browser. Turn on the visibility of the cutting surface. Click on the split button, in the 3D model tab. Select the trim solid button, select the surface for the split tool, and only the pillars which is the solid 3 on the browser. Check the dinger link direction. Click the OK button. Turn off the visibility of the surface. And a clean cylinder wall is exposed. In this segment, create the intake port for the cylinder block. No intake valves for this one, only intake port. The intake port itself has no moving parts. Begin by creating a sketch from this surface. Make a center point arc from the center to the outer right edge of the cylinder block like so. Then another arc on the inner right edge of the cylinder block. Create a line perpendicular to the arc and snap it on or somewhere near each end of the arc. Trim out the excess lines to make a closed loop. Constrain the inner arc to the inner edge of the cylinder with a tangent constraint. As the arcs are moved the lines are not perpendicular to the arc, but shows that it is a closed loop. Constrain the lines to the arc with a perpendicular constraint. Switch to top view and grab the arc by the end. Make a horizontal line towards the right, and constrain it horizontally, and snap it to the center of the arc and the center origin. Convert the horizontal line to a construction line, and adjust the arcs to form the intake valve. Set the dimension between the arcs to 25 millimeters. Further, inspect the sketch, to see if there are solid forms that it will obstruct, or a function of the solid that it will cover. On the 3D model tab, select the extrude command. Select the extrude direction to the other side, and check, if it will be a solid or cut. Pull on the ding -a ling until the approximate height is achieved. The exact height will be set when it is inside the assembly when we can see the bottom dead center or BDC of the piston. Hold tight on the ding -a ling and pull it slowly, until the intake port height looks good. Then set the distance value to 50 mm, which is close to our approximation. On the browser, there are still two solids. Not good. Double click on extrusion 2, and set the extrusion as a new solid. Now, there are three solids in the browser. Isolate the solid just created, by selecting hide others on the context menu. On this segment, the fillets are already created. On the 3D model tab, select the thicken, offset button, select the surface button. Set the thickness to zero, and select the inside faces of the intake port sequentially. Then click on the apply button. Looks good, click on cancel. Now we have a cutter to cut off anything, or anyone that gets in our way. Click on the extend surface on the 3D model tab, and select the edges of the surface. Pull the ding -a ling slowly, until the proper surface extension is achieved. 5 mm is a good number. Press OK. The surface extension is created. 
turn on the visibility of the other solid. Not that, the other solid. The expected cut on the cylinder is now in order. Click on the split button, and select the trim button in the split window. Select the surface cutter, then the solid to be cut, as indicated by the outline preview. Be careful. That's the one. Click on the OK button. And the cut is executed. Turn off the cutter's visibility, and we now see a nice air, gas and oil mixture sucking intake port. See that, the bold pillars have extended beyond the end of the cylinder. Adjust the pillar length by selecting solid 3 on the browser, then double click on the extrusion 1. Hold tight on the ding -a ling and push it back a little, enough that the cylinder will form an extension to be inserted on the crank case. Leave the value to 132 mm, and add it to the clipboard. Better if you can remember later. The cylinder is now taking a much more familiar mechanically sound form. Later on in the assembly, the opportunity to adjust various parameters on this model will be at hand. Nothing is set yet at the moment. On the 3D model tab, select the combine button, and combine all the solids in the browser. Again, there is only one solid. Inspect any cracks, manufacturing defects, or paranormal anomalies in the solid cylinder form. Click on this surface, and create a sketch. Project the inner edge of the cylinder, and offset it to 4 mm. On the 3D model tab, click extrude, and select the sketch profile. Grab the ding alling, and pull down close to 4 mm. Enter 4 mm on the text box, and press OK. Again, inspect any cracks, manufacturing defects, or paranormal anomalies, that is about to happen in the solid cylinder form. Create a sketch on this surface, and project the surface, so a sketch block can be created. Select the projected geometry, and delete the constraints from the context menu. On the sketch tab, click on the create drop down menu, and select create block. Select the entire sketch. While the create block window is still active, click on the insertion point select button, and select the center point on the sketch, and on the block name text box. Name the sketch accordingly. Press OK. A sketch block is created, as seen on the browser. Select the N2D sketch on the context menu. Delete the sketch just made, to leave only the sketch block in the browser. Click on the top of the pillar surface, and create a sketch. Create a circle near the slot solid, a reasonable diameter will do. Create three more circles to complete the symmetry. Now, dimension the circles to about 8 millimeters. Make all other circles equal diameter with the equal constraint. Center all the circles with a concentric constraint.
It's the waste to die button. Click on the finish sketch icon on the ribbon. Click on the whole command on the 3D model tab. Verify that the placement drop down is set to from sketch. Select the centers of each hole, and verify that centers button shows four centers. Click on the through hole button below the drill point section in the hole window. Wait for the database to load. In the fastener section, select the metric M profile on the drop down selection menu. Select the hex head bolt on the next drop down menu, then select close on the fit section. Next, select 12 mm on the size. Verify all holes exist on the workspace. Grab the dinger ling down hard to make a through hole. Then press OK. Yes yes yo. This is the part, that I was supposed to say something. And that something, was about to be said. Now, that something flew out of the window. I love tumbling my model about in this virtual space. Everyone does that. Except, that they cut it short in the video. Time for me to cut this short too. Grab your coloring books. On the tools tab, select materials and choose aluminium 6061 on the materials browser. Close the window. Verify that the materials was added to the solid model. Select the part in the browser, and click on the appearance button in the tools tab. Choose the cast aluminium from the icons display list. Close the browser. Verify that the material was added to the part. Select the faces, walls, and linings. And add a machined aluminium texture to the selected faces. Verify the texture, by moving around to catch a reflection on the surface. Instead of selecting each hole, select the hole extrusion on the browser. On the appearance button in the tools tab, select the machined aluminium and verify if the material was applied to the hole. Click on the bottom surface as shown, and add a machined aluminium texture on the surface from the appearance browser. Next, apply a polished texture on the cylinder walls. Select the inside wall of the cylinder block. From the Tools tab, click on the Appearance Browser button, and from the search box inside the Appearance Browser, type in the word Polished. Anything related to Polished from Telesevelas to a turd will be displayed on the browser. Choose Chrome Polished from the icon list. It will be added to the selection. Now find the Polished Aluminum Texture and include it in the selection. Change to list view, and find it, at the top list. Add it to the list of materials selection. It may be used later, in the assembly. Select the chrome polished black from the selection box. The chrome texture looks better than the aluminum texture. Select the chrome. Again, inspect the model if there are cracks, manufacturing defects, or paranormal anomalies in the solid. On the top of the cylinder, select the pillar surface, along with the extrusion. On the appearance button in the ribbon, select the machined aluminum material, and apply it to the model. Now it's looking really good. I can't say it any better. 
On this segment, we will add a dimension, on a sketch we made earlier. This is the distance between bolts in the pillar. Select extrusion 1 on the browser. The preview sketch for the pillar is displayed. Select on sketch 4, nested under extrusion 1. On the sketch tab in the ribbon, select the dimension command. And dimension this point to this point. However, almost all the geometry is constrained to one another. Except the warning window. The dimension will become a driven dimension. This is not an error. Now, the distance indicates 96 mm. This dimension must be present, and visible in an assembly to properly connect the cylinder block to the crank case. After dimensioning the two ends of the square inches the sketch, close the sketch. Check the model again for cracks, defects, and paranormal activities. I don't see any creepy stuff in the model, such as a face, smiling at you in the chrome reflection. So, we are good. Let's proceed, go to the top view. Click the navigation cube on the upper right hand corner to top view. Create a sketch on this surface, and draw a rectangle at the center of the origin point, like so. Check, that the rectangle will not obstruct or trimmed the intake port made earlier. While there's still no face smiling at you on the reflection. Select the extrude button on the 3D model tab. Click on the third selection box in the shape tab of the extrude command window. Pull down the dingling slightly beyond the length of the cylinder to form the cut on the sides of the fin. This is called the intersect operation. The dimensions for the extrude is still irrelevant, until we make an assembly. Now that the cooling fins are trimmed on both sides, check the model one more time for any cracks, manufacturing defects, or paranormal activity. Select the extrusion 4 in the browser, and then click on the appearance command in the ribbon above. On the selection menu, choose the machined aluminum material for the extrusion. As you can see, the reflection in the solid is significantly less. Remember, as the number of reflective surfaces increased, so are the chances for you to see a reflection of a face smiling back at you in admiration. This texture will significantly reduce your chances to smile back at the face in the reflection. Sometime later on the series of videos, and aside from the assembly, we will come back again to this model, and make a mold, for the aluminum casting. Then we will create an NC, or G code, for the CNC machine to turn, cut, mill and drill. If there is a CNC shop nearby your place, with a 5-axis machine, then, chances are, you will be able to fabricate this model. I will show you, how to use the HSM Works cam that is built in on this version of Inventor, and simulate the CNC process, to fabricate this model. This model can be downloaded from my GrabCAD account, for free. When you find it there, don't forget to like. Likewise, don't forget to press on the like button below. Until the next video. Thank you very much for watching. The next video will be the crankshaft, then after, the rotary valve. And then, the assembly.